you find, you, know, you said that um, it's helping your acting, getting back the, onto the technical side of it. Yeah. Do you feel that your acting was definitely helpful for getting onto the technical side, for being in front of the camera, like he said, for being an actor and going into directing? Um, the, <laughs> I think actually for the directing part, I kind of forgot the stuff that I know as an actor that I like in a director because I was so worried about like, okay, I have to kind of take charge of this. Mm -hmm. And so I actually kind of, you know, because actors like feedback and I could pretty much just forgot to give my actors feedback because I was so focused on everything else that I don't usually do mm -hmm. and doing a good job in those areas that I let that fall to the wayside, okay. unfortunately. So it <laughs> kind of backfired I, yeah. on me. <laughs> no, I understand too. Yeah, I just had the whole thing about sensitivity. Now I'm thinking about the first time I directed where I was like, why are you all so needy? <laughs> <laughs> because the funny thing is I was still like an acting director, so I'm still an actor in the director's body yeah. being like, well, what about me? Like, I have needs. Um, you know, and I was like, just all of you shut up. Like, you know, so it's, it's taken a while to be like, okay, I need to remember like, what would I feel, what, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and there are actors more sensitive than me too, so. I think my writing has definitely made me a better actor. I understand so much more now having to construct scripts and text for people to perform. Mm -hmm. um, I understand, you know, like wording and, and phrasing and stuff. And like now it's funny because um, I used to have trouble with memorization, um, but not all the time. Like there were scripts I could look at once and have them. Um, and then there were other scripts that I had to hammer down into my head. And now having, you know, become like started writing routinely, I get why that happens now. You know, um, I know they say like never blame, the, I know what's like the most. Oh, like please no, share. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I'll, bla I'll use me for an example. Like I've given things to people and they've come back to me and say, I never have trouble memorizing and I can't seem to memorize this piece of yours. And when I look, go back and look at the piece, it's because of how, you know, you're not supposed to blame the writer, but sometimes it's the writing. It's my writing at least. Mm -hmm. um, it's the wording you use. It's awkward phrasing. It's the fact that, you know, maybe they don't use, you know, maybe I'm using words that people don't use, you know. Sure. I always say that I never met an $8 word I didn't love. Um, so it's like sometimes it's that's just a question of that and it's interesting to now look at other people's text and go, well, that's why I'm not getting this because, you know, I wouldn't ever say it that way. Because know? a lot of writers and things and you aren't do, clicking. You yeah. write the way you speak or the, you yeah. write the way you think it should be said as opposed to the way yeah. it would flow into that particular circumstance. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I did, um, I did a play called The Heidi Chronicles a few years ago by, and, um, I, by Wendy Wasserstein. And um, I looked at that script once and I just had it, but he just talked like me. Mm. Like, it was just like, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Like, I would say that, I would say, and it just was, it just clicked. You know, comedy is very easy for me because you don't forget punchlines. True. You know, if you ever have, you know, uh, if you're ever in a musical comedy, you usually come on quick because it's all like bump, -um bump stuff. Um, but then there's other, you know, I think we hadn't, we were talking earlier before we started filming about Shakespeare and how, you know, it's hot. <laughs> Shakespeare's so hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> Shakespeare yeah. is very rigid. It is, it, it, you really can't go outside of. Outside of well, there's no paraphrase. There is no there's paraphrase. No, there's no paraphrase. <laughs> there's no but you paraphrase. but you also just feel like it's such. I mean, there's such a history of the Shakespeare. All the people that have done it, and there's such a weight behind it, and, and you just you, you feel like you're trying to carry out a tradition. I think when you step into it, and that's why I will never. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it just I I personally cannot do it. Um, uh, so, Sarah, you are yeah. unfortunately going to be leaving Rhode Island. Uh, uh, and Kevin. When did this happen? She is. She, she <laughs> is. Going? She is going. I'm to, going to LA. Yes. Uh. And Kevin, I know that you are a huge proponent for staying in Rhode Island, continuing arts in Rhode Island. So here is my little devil's advocate question. <laughs> oh boy. Why go? Why stay? Okay, I'm totally for, as as an artist in Rhode Island. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not. No, I feel like my position on it is I'm a proponent for appreciating local talent, mm -hmm. for giving local talent stuff to do so they don't feel like they have to leave. Okay. Um, for creating opportunities here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel like this state hemorrhages talent. I've had so many incredibly talented people leave who wanted to stay but felt like they couldn't because there just weren't opportunities here. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for, you know, like, it's LA's gain, absolutely. <laughs> um, my, my, and so it's not like, you should stay here. It's just more like, I'm kind of disappointed in this state um, because I feel like we place value on uh, outside talent. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a big, long eight page, you know, letter to the editor, but to condense it, I just am kind of sick mm -hmm. of that whole, they're from somewhere other than here, they must be better attitude. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in auditions where people walked in and said, oh, I'm from New York, and they immediately okay. went to the head of the line. Mm -hmm. Well, you can live in New York, it, you know, it doesn't mean you're necessarily working in New York, getting trained in New York, taking classes in New York. I had a friend who lived in New York for a year, came back, didn't do anything while they were there, not, that they, not for lack of trying, but just worked and came back and all of a sudden were getting offered roles left and right because now they were from New York. Well, it's great to be from New York, it's great to be from anywhere, but you could be amazing and be from Nebraska, you could be amazing sure. and be from, you know, and I feel, you know, I see that with Boston actors, I see that with New York actors here, um, and if, and the double-edged sword to that, or the, you know, w the problem is if I go to other places, you know, I get it the opposite way. I get, well, you're from Rhode Island, are you any good? So it's like, you know, so it's, we're, you know, so Rhode Island actors are kind of at a loss both ways. Um, if you look at certain publications, it seems an awful lot like, you know, uh, a few weeks ago in one of them, there were two articles about people who, you know, left Rhode Island and came back and the whole tone of the article was, of both articles was, they like went out to the real world and gained knowledge and brought it back to the village so we could make fire. And it, it just, <laughs> it, it bothers, you know, and, and I'll say it bothers me that, you know, um, if you uh, are in the ensemble of a touring non-equity production of Mamma Mia, you get a five page spread on the art section of a paper and there are people who live and work here and do awesome stuff mm -hmm. and don't get that kind of attention okay. because people love the, you know, big city, you know, small town kid goes to big city, comes back to small town angle. Mm -hmm. I just think it's all kind of destructive mm -hmm. and not healthy and that's my whole soapbox. That being said, <laughs> I'm more just sad that she's leaving because sure. I like her very much and would like oh. her to stay. So why go? I, um, I, you know, there's so much going on, and, and for is. me, I think it's growing both in film and in theater and so forth. So, why go? You're, you have such a good reputation here. You're consistently working. You're never lacking for a project. Why leave that? I don't want a day job anymore. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> okay. pretty much it. Okay. I, I want to make a living doing this. Okay. And um, I, I've tried, and I've been trying, mm -hmm. and there unfortunately are just not enough paying opportunities here to consistently do it and pay rent doing it. Okay. And um, I wish there was. If there was, I would stay. See? <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Now, do you think there would be a different take on going uh, if you were more focused on theater? I mean, because basically with theater, you can... You, you go can, to New York, though. Yeah, I mean, it's the yeah, same thing. She's, you think so? I mean, but, yeah. but nowadays, it's, I mean, I, I think that you could pretty much stand in an alleyway with two flashlights, deliver a show. If you're like, bravo, that's theater. But with yeah, film, but like she's it's considered either. you're not a real filmmaker. You know, yeah, I, you know. I mean, but like what she's saying, you can't make a living you at can't it. Make a living. No, you, I mean, okay. I work all the time. Um, you know, I, I do theater all the time. Yeah, and, I, and there are people who have been generous enough to pay me for doing it, but it's not enough to make a living at it. And I think... What I admire about what you just said is that the, the, I also, I always ask myself, like, how much, how good am I with a day job? Like, how good am I working, worrying about my day job, working 35 hours a week? You know, I'm the type where, especially mm -hmm. directing and even acting, like, I would want to stay in rehearsal till 2 o'clock in the morning and get it right. You know, but in the back of my mind, I'm but going, well, I have to work tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so it's always that question of, like, uh, am I at doing the best that I can do with this whole other life that I have to lead? Right. It, I mean, it's getting to the point where my, my day job's now getting in the way, oh. and so I, it's, I ha but I need it to, you survive. know, survive, yeah. so I can't, I, I have to, I have to go somewhere where I can get paid for doing what I want to do, so I can get rid of the day job and just focus on that, yeah. and unfortunately, that means going to New York or L.A. And you've chosen so. L.A. Film, yeah. Uh, so. And you've yeah. never thought about going to New York no. to, to go? Oh, and, I've thought about it. Well, I mean, there's, there's, you'd have a wider variety of actors, more venues. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, no, I couldn't do what I'm doing now in New York. Why not? I, I don't think so. Well, not that I couldn't do it. I, I could do different things. Um, I feel like I, um, it, well, I mean, you know, plus after everything I just said, it's like, well, all right, put your money where your mouth is. Like, I like staying here and trying to create opportunities for mm -hmm. people. Um, I like, I love the people that are here. I grew up here, you know, this is where my roots are. And I don't have that sort of like bash Rhode Island attitude that 
that a lot of people I know have mm -hmm. because they've grown up here and they don't know anything else. And, they, and I think when you're so close to Boston and New York and you can see the greener pastures like <laughs> right over the field, it's really hard to not be like, God, it stinks here, you know, like, and, it, and um, I, li you know, I like it here and I, I'd rather try to make it work here. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, you know, there's so much here that I haven't done yet that mm. I would want to do before I would want to go somewhere else. And I'd love to, you know, and I'd love to create opportunities so, you know, great people like Sarah don't have to, you know, that's my <laughs> ultimate goal because I, I, I think every friend I have as they were graduating college and even high school or whatever, you know, it's, well, gotta leave now. And again, not necessarily because a lot of them wanted to leave, but yeah. because they felt like they had no choice. They felt like in order they to make a living, want to make a living at, at what they love to do, and that's totally respectable. And they felt like they couldn't do it here. So um, I think my like big passion is to try to find a way to fix that. You know, I'm, you obviously can't fix it for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you're never. But you know, if you look at places like Boston, I mean, Boston's not that much bigger than us, and they're not. The, they just really put a lot of support behind their their art scene. And we get a lot of support here as well, but we got to up that because we have so much more talent, you know, so much talent to showcase that's not getting showcased. There is a lot of talent per capita. Oh, I mean, yeah. in Rhode Island, a lot of artists that are amazing for a very small state, I, I kind of find Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, do you think it could change, though, in this state? Do you think that the opportunities to, to grow and to pay uh, artists to stay in the state, do you think there's, a, there's an opportunity for growth for that? I think do you see that at all? I think a lot of the problem is, you know, what you were saying about outside talent, you know, being mm -hmm. more highly valued. And so the things that are done here that, you know, do pay, they'll bring in someone from New York for one line. I mean... And pay them twice pay what they'll them. pay us like, because they're from New York. Right. Only because they're from New York. And don't tell me you can't get someone local to do that. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like, the, the thing is, I'm, I'm not, you know, people hear me say that and I sound like some yokel from Mayberry. <laughs> <laughs> I go to New York all the time. I see those shows. I go to Boston. I see shows there. Mm -hmm. And they're good. But I know people who are just as good yeah. Yeah. here. And I think it's, I think there's, the community of people here is wonderful. It's an incredibly supportive community. And I think it's just when you start going higher up, Mm -hmm. that people start getting that way. You know, the, the people within this community who do shows with each other, mm -hmm. who go support mm -hmm. each other, they all know that there's enough talent here mm -hmm. to just pull from, from what we have, you know? Um, I do my monologue shows where I, I kind of just use people yeah. who are local. And I have a list, I mean, I have a list of people I haven't even gotten to. And I've mm -hmm. worked with now over 130 people on these monologue shows, and I still have tons of people to go. They're always amazing, I have to tell you, they, I, I absolutely enjoy watching your monologue shows. If you can get her in one before she goes. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know there was a rock. <laughs> oh, God, I'm like that, writing we're, one in We're going to throw that on. We've got <laughs> yeah. that on film and everything. You can bump it. I don't know if you'd ever, ever be interested in doing sure, one of yeah. his monologue shows. They're fantastic. It's, it's, a weird, like, it's weird doing a monologue show. I'm more nervous. There's nobody to catch you. Yeah. You're just there. But. The audience is focused on you. You've even Kevin has the actors sit around or up on the way he sets them up and the way that he does it. But what I also love, and if I may, about working with Kevin and doing his monologue shows is he pulls in different levels of talent. Mm -hmm. So you've got the people that have been doing it, you know, 40, 50 years, and you've got the new kids who are directly out of school, and he puts them all on an even playing field. And he doesn't say you're better, you're worse, blah blah blah. He's like, here's my monologue. Let's see what you can do with it. And it seriously is, it's just, it's amazing to be put there. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I, Thank you. I, I love your shows. You. Now, going on, I mean, looking at your resume, it goes, my God. <laughs> and your resume, my God. I mean, what keeps you guys going? What keeps you so motivated? Keep pushing, keep changing, keep thriving for the next project. What is it? There's so many good things out there to keep doing. Yeah. I mean, like. I actually wish I, I could do more. I wish I could do more. <laughs> like, I, wish I, could do more. <laughs> I can't see how. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I do. There's so many great people out there is, to work is with. That what it, is it an internal fire? Is it externally, you know, is it people going to you? You're amazing. You're so fantastic. We want to work with you. Blah, blah, blah. Is it that or is it just the fire within yourself that. I think it's within myself. I, know, I personally am very competitive. So <laughs> good, to, good to know. <laughs> um, so I, I'll take a look at like, um, okay, well this film's going on and this film's going on and oh, I'm not in those. Oh man, I should be in those. <laughs> like <laughs> I want yeah. to do everything. Okay. And you know, I'll see like other actors and oh, well they've done this, this and this. Well, I need to do that too. And so I just, I, I'm constant. I think part <clears throat> of it is that. I think part of it is that mm. I am, I have yet to be completely satisfied with a performance of mine, so I keep wanting to okay. get better and get 
get, I don't think I'll ever be completely satisfied, but I can try mm -hmm. to continue to work towards that. Okay. <laughs> For me, it's just, I always say that, like, I know there's, you know, hopefully it's a day far away, but there's going to be a day where I can't be at this pace. I'm mm. not going to be able to work this hard and do this much stuff. So I feel like as long as I have the energy and I have yeah. the ability and the time, mm -hmm. I should do it. Because I, I would rather do it now than look, you know, I mean, I'll totally complain, you know, like, I'm busy and I'll totally be driving in the car and going, oh, I shouldn't have done but as soon as I have two days off, the first day off is always great. The second day off, I'm yeah, like shaking like, yeah. because I'm like, what am I not? I do the same thing. What am I not doing? And you know, when I was in college, I didn't get roles. I didn't do anything. So I sat by and watched everybody else work. And I think, you know, I can't imagine that I met you in college doing work. Well, well I you were producing college, stuff in not, college. Not me. I was. But as far as like actually getting, I got, you know, one role in, I got, no, I got some smaller roles. And, but like, I didn't really get any of like the juicy stuff. I never got like the big role. Um, and I think sitting by for four years, it was like a, you know, like a, one of the pots on the stove, just going, going, going. So when I finally started like kicking my own butt mm -hmm. and saying, you need to just get out there and just make your own it. opportunities and do mm -hmm. your own thing. And if you want to work with someone, go tell them. I was the type of person who, if Sarah was doing a play that I thought was awesome, I would just try to trash her and take her down because she didn't ask me to do it. Instead of <laughs> instead of calling her, instead of calling her and saying, like, hey, Sarah, I'd love to work on that with you. Or you were, I'd love were you with the mean project. girls of theater? Oh, I was a I was a nasty because I I think whenever you're a theater person or a film person or an artist not doing art, it festers inside it you. It rots you out from yeah. the inside. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to wrap this up. I want to thank you both very much for being the first guests on my talk show. Woo! Oh, thank you for tuning in to the Artist Spotlight. I want to thank Kevin Broccoli and Sarah Nicklin for coming and uh, being my first guests. And um, Sarah, we can get in touch with you and find out more about you by going to your website. Yep, my website is Sarah with an H, Nicklin.com. And Kevin, we can find out more about you by? Just carrier pigeons. Just, ca <laughs> just send them. <laughs> just just put a little carrier around them. You know, find me on Facebook, all that good stuff. <laughs> My name is John Joseph Gomes, and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in to the Artist Spotlight, and thanks again to my uh, to my guests. Well, thanks for thank having you. Us. Thanks, guys. Hello. Hello. You're good.